that was easy. All right, so we're gonna be learning about constructing DFAs today. We're gonna to be working with SIPSER 1.37 in solving that problem. We have this language CN right here, which is all of the binary numbers, such that looking at the binary representation of that number, it is a multiple of N. So as an example, if we look at C5, that is all binary numbers that are a multiple of five. Well, if we look at say zero, that's gonna be corresponding to either the string of all zeros or the empty string. But non-trivially, if we look at the string five like this, that is in there too. So this is representing five, so it is a multiple of five. In addition, if I read the string 10, where I put a zero here, because if I put a zero on the end, that corresponds to multiplying by two, then this is also in there because 10 is obviously a multiple of five. But if I put, let's say 11 in here, then that is not a multiple of five, and so therefore it's not in C5. Okay, so then how do we solve this problem where we have to show that CN is regular for every choice of N, every integer N, every positive integer N. All right, so then how are we going to do that? Well. You could say we're going to make a DFA corresponding to each of the possible outcomes. It either is a multiple of n or is not a multiple of n. The failure with that approach is that in the case of strings that are not a multiple of n, there are actually multiple possibilities there. And I invite you to actually look at those possibilities and to actually investigate that yourself. I'm going to show you the, the right way to approach this which is to think about not just that it's a multiple of n or not, it's going to be about the remainder when you divide by n. So here, it either is going to be, if you divide by n, the number that you're looking at, it is either gonna be, have a remainder of zero, one, two, three, etc., up to n minus one. So those are the possible remainders. And let's, if you think about it, what we're really going to be doing here is, if we look at some uh, binary number right here, and uh, I'm not sure what it is, but let's just call it x, then let's say that we read a zero after the fact. And, well, I don't know necessarily what this whole thing is going to be necessarily, what remainder it's going to have, but let's suppose that x has a remainder of i when you divide by n. Okay. So x is gonna have a remainder of i. Well, let's think about what happens when we read a zero after the fact. Well, if we read a zero, then that means that we have effectively shifted the number over by one position. We multiplied the number by two because reading a zero on the end is multiplying the number by two. So in effect, this number, this, this extended number is gonna be two x, okay? So if the number is 2x now, then what is the remainder going to be? Well, again, I don't know for sure, but let's think. So if we have a remainder of i, it turns out that the remainder is going to be 2i. So this number is going to have a remainder of 2i. And the, the proof of that you can prove um, by induction, but... Uh, another way that you can look at this is just by considering what happens to the actual number. And let's just do an example, but this gives you the idea. So let's say that we had n equal to 5, and we had the, the number x equal to 11. Okay, well then if we divide by 5, our remainder is 1. So 11 remainder 5 is going to have a remainder of 1. So the remainder for this is 1. Then if we do 2x, that's obviously 22, and then the remainder here is not, doesn't start, remainder doesn't start with m, the remainder is 2. Obviously this isn't a proof, but this is the general idea behind it. But if we consider the same idea, but we read a 1 after the fact, then that corresponded to shifting the number over one position and adding a 1. So this one is going to have 2x plus 1, and the remainder here is going to be 2i plus 1. 
So let's do a di different example because there's something I want to highlight here. So if we have n again equal to 5, but then let's choose x to be 9. And, and, and let's, uh, let's do the reading 1 afterward thing. So the remainder here is obviously going to be 4 because it, you can do the math yourself. 2x is obviously 18. But then the if we, oh, I need to do plus 1. And then that's obviously going to be 19. Well, then the remainder here is 4 again? How is that possible? Wouldn't the remainder be 2x plus 1 because that would be 9? It turns out that we need to do remainder again. <laughs> because if the remainder goes higher than the number itself, then we, in principle the remainder could be 9 in, in a certain sense, but the real remainders are between 0 and n minus 1. So we need to uh, take the modulo n again if we go over. So the real remainder is not 2i plus 1, it's 2i plus 1 mod n. Okay, And the same thing is true for 2i. So if we wanted to make a DFA for this thing, so let's, let's write out what a DFA would be. So we're going to make a state for each one of the possible outcomes, which is every one of the, the remainders when you divide by n. So the states here, states q, are going to be the remainders. So it's going to be uh, 0, 1, up to n minus 1. And then the alphabet is obviously going to be 0 and 1 because the language only has 0, 1 strings. The start state, let's think about that. Well, the start state is going to be uh, the place where we consider reading the empty string. So if we read the empty string, what number does that correspond to? And it corresponds to the string corresponding to 0. So that encodes the number 0 uh, conventionally. And so that means that we should go to the state zero because if you take the, um, the number zero mod n, that's gonna have a remainder of zero because zero is the remainder of everything. So this is gonna be the state zero. Uh, the final states, well, uh, it's gotta be a set, obviously. Well, here, what is the, the uh, set of final states gonna be? Well, we want only the things that are a multiple of n, which means that they correspond to a remainder of zero. And so therefore, we need to have only the zero state be the final state. And, let's, and then if you have another problem that's related to this, where you have like um, the remainder is like 1 or 3 mod n, then you could set the final state to be like 1 or 3 here. But we're solving this particular problem. All right, so then for the transition function, let's consider if, we're, if we are in a particular state q, and we are reading the number a. Uh, yeah, let's do it that way. So, the, so a here could be 0 or 1. Q could be any one of the states here. Well, our basic idea was to take the existing remainder, multiply it by 2 because the number grew by, uh, was shifted over by one position, so it had to be multiplied by 2. And either you add 0 or 1 after the fact, and then uh, mod n as necessary. So then here, the output of this is going to be uh, 2q, because q was the remainder. That's how we, we encoded the remainders as states. And then the thing of whether we add or not is going to be the, the a here. So what we had was 2i mod n and 2i plus 1 mod n. So it was either we added 0 or 1 corresponding to the actual character. So we could... We could have a separate case where we say 0 and 1 here, but I'm just putting it uh, at the same place here. So 2q plus a mod n. And this is for uh, all q and a. So for every possible choice of state and character, this is the state that you go to right here. And it, it begs to do an example of this, of what this looks like. So let's do the C5 example. So, according to this, we're going to have five states, so zero. So, so I, I hate doing examples like this because the only state that's final is the zero state, but it's called zero. 
<laughs> so I, I'm actually going to call it Q0 so that we can actually see that the, the zero doesn't mean that it's a final state. It means that it's a state called zero and it's a final state. So it, it would look like a triple nested uh, circle instead of a doubly nested one. So I'm, uh, just for this, I'm going to call it Q0 so it's less confusing. So then we're going to have the states 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I arrange them in a circle uh, because they're going to, um, for reasons we'll see. All right, so then what we're going to do here is follow the recipe. So if we have a remainder of 0, then we're going to multiply by 2. So if we're reading the uh, 0 as an example. So that means that we're going to multiply this remainder by 2 and add 0 and mo then mod n. So 0 times 2 is 0, plus 0 is also 0, mod 5 is 0. So this state loops on 0. And it kind of makes sense why that would be, because if you have a number that's a multiple of 5, or a multiple of anything, and you, and you multiply by 2, that doesn't change the fact that it's a multiple of the thing before. And, and you can do that as much as you want, so that, that makes total sense. All right, so then for the one transition, where does it go? Well, that, so if we take zero, multiply it by two, and add one, that's gonna be one. So one modulo five is one. So that's gonna go to here. And in general, if you're gonna have, and the reason why I have it in a circle is wherever the zero guy goes, the one guy goes to the next state along in the chain here in the circle. All right, so the one state, where does it go on, let's say, zero? So on zero, that means multiplying the number by two, not adding anything, and then modulo five. Well, one times two is two. <laughs> adding zero is still two. And then modulo five is two still. So there's nothing too exciting yet. And then uh, we can obviously see that the one state, uh, the one transition is going to go to the next one in the chain. The two state, this is where things get interesting. So two, let's figure out where it goes on zero. So on zero, that means it's gonna go to four modulo five, which is four. So the zero guy is gonna go here. And then the one guy goes to the next one in the chain. Well, if the zero guy goes to four, the one guy should go to five, but we gotta take the modulo n here because there's no five state. So the one is actually going to go to the next one in the chain, which is zero. And it kind of makes sense. If you take two, for example, just the number two, not the remainder two, the number two, and you, uh, which is corresponding to one zero in binary, if you read a one after that, that's the number five. And so therefore that's a multiple of five. So that, that, that gives you an idea for why that's the case. All right. For three on input zero, so let's see, so that is uh, multiplying this thing by two, so that would be six, plus zero, which, so that's still six, and then modulo five, that's going to be uh, one. So therefore, yeah, I did that right. <laughs> uh, so if I read zero, that's going to go to the one state, and then the one transition is going to go to the next guy in the chain, which is two here. All right, and then on four, where are we gonna go on zero? So that means multiplying four by two, which is eight. Uh, so, and, and so eight modulo five is three. So the zero guy is gonna go down to here. And then the one transition goes to the next one in the chain, which is this one. So that's why we saw before that uh, when we had nine and 19 before, why they both had a remainder of four. And this is the exact reason why. All right, so that is the DFA for, um, for uh, integers that are multiple of five. In fact, you can actually show that this is optimal in size. You can't make a smaller machine for this. Uh, so one thing that is actually a very interesting question is, which DFAs here are optimal in size? This one you can prove is optimal in size. You can't make a smaller one. But if you make the one for, I think, four, then I think you can make a smaller one for that and eight and 16. You, and, and those ones, you can actually make them smaller because for like for eight, for example, every n binary number that's a multiple of eight ends in three zeros. 
So effectively, the question is just, do you end in three zeros or not? And you can proceed from there. So I think you can make a smaller one than uh, a DFA that has eight states, but, I, but it's a really interesting question. Hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about this particular question into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.